tonight on a special edition of Evening, a nonprofit that connects kids to amazing role models, rock stars bringing music to people in need, and how this organization is helping LGBTQ owned businesses thrive. It's Evening's Let's Stay Connected special. <laughs> everyone and welcome to a very special edition of evening i'm ellen and you know what i feel like we could all use a little bit more connection right now so that's why we are doing our let's stay connected special we are highlighting six incredible nonprofits in western washington who are doing amazing things for the people and places we love in our state i'm at seattle center tonight where right behind me is the future climate pledge arena this will one day be an amazing stadium for the Seattle Kraken and Seattle Storm. And it does have a connection to one of our nonprofits in this show. More on that soon, but first, we feature a lot of awesome businesses on evening, many of them owned by LGBTQ people. But historically, those businesses have faced a lot of discrimination in the past. That's why our first nonprofit is here to make sure that they thrive. Terra Plata on Capitol Hill isn't just a spot to snag paella on Monday nights or inspire a slightly different view of Brussels sprouts. This restaurant is one of Washington's many LGBTQ owned businesses represented by the GSBA. And Terra Plata has always been about a gathering space and about bringing community together and and the GSBA, it's emblematic of that. The GSBA, or Greater Seattle Business Association, is a business chamber for LGBTQ and allied businesses, started by nine gay business owners in 1981. It was started first as to support each other and, and keep that pink dollar circulating in the community, but shortly thereafter they realized hey, we have some economic clout in the community. We can use that economic clout to address the rampant discrimination that was e existing for the LGBTQ community. From there, the GSBA has become not only a directory of these small businesses, but an advocate for them as well. So for us, we're about strengthening those small businesses, giving them resources, education, training. Small businesses like Terra Plata, a farm to table restaurant that's been a Seattle staple since 2011. I realized that I had a voice and that um, I didn't want to be a restaurant that just served food. I wanted to serve my community. A lot has changed since the GSBA's founding. We've come a long way, baby. <laughs> but there's still work to do. Sponsors like Primera support the GSBA and other projects, like their scholarship fund and Travel Out Seattle, a travel guide tailored to LGBTQ visitors. As a community of small businesses and restaurants, it's like we need all the help we can get. And in the midst of a pandemic, that support is more important than ever. Our small businesses truly in every neighborhood in Seattle and throughout the state and the country, they give the distinct um, culture and history of a neighborhood. If we lose that because of COVID-19 or the economic downturn, we will lose who we are. And while much has changed since 1981, what hasn't changed is the GSBA's work to support not just businesses, but people. And I can't imagine our life, not only as a business in Terra Plata, in Tamara and I, I just can't imagine my life without the GSBA. Okay, I just have to say, Terra Plata's food is incredible. I was able to try some while I was there. And yes, they definitely do takeout and delivery. So go get yourself some good food. If you want to learn more about the GSBA or any of the other nonprofits we covered today, you can go to our website at king5evening.com. Okay, so back to the Climate Pledge Arena right behind me. Uh, Seattle Kraken's going to be there, as I mentioned before. And the Kraken is actually a huge supporter of the next nonprofit. In fact, when they announced the name, if you bought any of the merchandise that they sold, you've probably already donated to this nonprofit. They're making sure that homeless youth in King County are given the care and the community that they need. Here's Angela. Chances are you've seen signs like these. Safe place, a way for youth experiencing homelessness to know that youth care is there to help. Since that tiny little start of, you know, a three bed shelter, um, we have 
now 14 locations in Seattle, serving about 1,500 young people per year. Youth Care is a nonprofit that helps homeless kids and young adults in King County, giving them the shelter and support they need for a brighter future. So in King County, we have about a thousand unaccompanied youth and young adults who are experiencing homelessness every night. In a national study, 90% of homeless youth report family conflict. We really want youth to see themselves as being able to thrive and having the potential to get a job, to go to school, finish school. You know, in addition to those bigger goals, we also want to teach someone, you know, hygiene and how to um, how to answer the phone, you know, for an interview. And youth care makes sure that kids and young adults get mental health support as well. And then we start to really think about and focus on healing and, and doing elements of helping them process the trauma that they have experienced outside of our walls. Primera is really interested in supporting mental health. And so we are working with Primera on how that can best be um, beneficial to the young people we serve. And through their work, Youth Care hopes to one day end youth homelessness. No one wants to grow up and be homeless. No one starts out thinking, gee, that would be a really great, you know, moment in my life. And this is actually probably one of the, the hardest things that a young person has ever, ever, ever experienced. And they'll look back and be like, wow, that was really hard. And so we're here, you know, as a community, having the opportunity to really embrace young people who have no other support system. And we get to be the support system, not just youth care, but the entire community. Thanks so much, Angela. The Seattle Kraken continues to support youth care by spreading awareness and raising money for them. So the next nonprofit is a familiar feature on Evening. They are spreading music to people who need it the most. Don't you hear my call, though you're many years away. Music Don't is just powerful, call. and it's just very disarming and, and a powerful way to connect and encourage. Levi and Stephanie Ware are the couple behind the Melodic Caring Project, a nonprofit founded in 2010 that brings music to the people who need it the most. So we do that by filming live concerts and then streaming those concerts live to the kids in their hospital rooms. It's a support program for kids and families that are dealing with, with cancer or other illnesses, chronic illnesses. Princess Lexi in Oregon, and we got Maya and Braden here in Washington. Give it up one more time. So it's not just a video experience for them. I think that's fun and watching that, but it's also that personal connection, that personal recognition, knowing that these people care and they're cheering for you. Over 300 hospitals work with the Melodic Caring Project, connecting kids and their families to the nonprofit. Kids who are part of the program are called rock stars. Our goal is, is to make them feel not alone. Through the years, the MCP has filmed live concerts and brought musicians into hospitals, but the pandemic has changed things dramatically. Welcome back to MCP Connects. Today we spend a little time in Birmingham, Alabama with our friend Brandon McCall, who plays Simba in the Broadway tour of The Lion King. They've created MCP Connects, a new way to connect with musicians. You hear it all the time that we're all going to come back stronger from this. And hear powerful songs. Hear these words and heaven. I think there's so many more people that are dealing with anxiety, so many more people dealing with depression. And, and so we really broadened the scope. One of their sponsors, Primera, has also been passionate about spreading mental health awareness. They continue to be uh, an amazing partner. Because the Melodic Caring Project isn't just about music. It's about connection and kindness. We're here to support the kids and we're here to support the families, but we're also here to create a space where we can all come and gather and join and, and you know, and, and come together in empathy and, and compassion towards each other. If your child wants to sign up to be a rock star, you can head to our website at king5evening.com for all of the info. And make sure to stick around to the end of the show because we have another Melodic Caring Project concert by one of Washington's own rock stars. Coming up, Seahawks player Tyler Ott talks about a nonprofit that changed his life. Plus, an organization helping kids find the role models they need. 
evening's Let's Stay Connected is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross. Hey everyone, welcome back to evening's Let's Stay Connected special where we're highlighting six awesome nonprofits in Western Washington. I'm at Seattle Center tonight where right behind me is the future Climate Pledge Arena, home to the Seattle Kraken. Release the Kraken! Oh, I just had to say that, that feels so good. So another beloved sports team, the Seahawks, supports lots of amazing causes, but one of the players holds a special connection to this next nonprofit. Here's Jim. Chances are you've heard of the March of Dimes, from funding the polio vaccine in 1955 to helping moms through their pregnancy journey, the nonprofit has helped millions of mothers and babies throughout the years, including one of our Seahawks. I got involved with the March of Dimes when um, the day I was born a month early. Um, I spent 10 days in the NICU in Tulsa, Oklahoma. While he's a six foot three, 250 pound long snapper now, Tyler Ott was actually born premature. My, you know, my family's got, my parents have gone through it. They've firsthand experience not being able to hold me after I was born, when I was in the NICU, not take me home right away. His mom's experience led her to discover the March of Dimes. And in turn, Tyler has become a lifelong advocate. Um, I've been involved, you know, from, you know, grade school, middle school, and then into high school, um, and just kind of kept supporting it. Now, Tyler does the Points for Premies pledge giving money for every Seahawks point kicked. So far, he's helped raise almost $40,000 in the past three years for the March of Dimes. Families are still having children. Babies are being born premature and their babies are still being born with birth defects. So the fight can't stop, even though maybe we've kind of paused our lives during this time. And the March of Dimes isn't stopping their fight. We are shifting from having a lot of our programming in the hospitals um, from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual. Thanks to their sponsor, Primera, they've grown their supportive pregnancy care program across Washington State to areas Christina calls a health care desert. It's really expanded our outreach and uh, the ability to connect with women who aren't necessarily in an urban community. They're also working to fight against racial bias in the healthcare system to make sure all moms receive the treatment they need. And now that Tyler Ott is a dad himself, the work of the March of Dimes means even more. We're a prime example, my wife and I, of people are still having babies during uh, quarantine and lockdown. So um, the March of, March of Dimes job isn't, isn't being put on pause right now because of COVID. Thanks so much, Jim. The March of Dimes has a Facebook Live every month that has lots of great info for mothers expecting during a pandemic. So if you want to find out more about that, you can head to our website at king5evening.com. Our next nonprofit deals with something that is really important, but you might not think about a lot. Kids having strong role models. She's nice <laughs> and always upbeat and I can trust her. Having someone looking out for you always feels good, but for kids, it's especially important. And for 13-year-old Ajene, that's Shay Villanueva. Kind of just hang out after school. I help with their homework if they need support in that, if they were dealing with some drama with friends. I'm just there as a, just an additional support outside of their immediate support system. Shay is a professional mentor with Friends of the Children, an organization dedicated to helping kids facing adversity in their lives. Well, I have a caseload of eight teenage girls, and we I essentially mentor them in our um, five core assets. They teach things like staying hopeful, problem solving, perseverance and grit and self-management, things that are helpful to pretty much everyone. Schoolwork, with staying engaged in school, with saying please and thank you, like little things like that. But it's not all homework and big lessons. I think our favorite activity to do together, and you can ask her about this too, is um, cooking. Sometimes we make Cake. We like to cook, bake. Um, I actually just dropped off some ingredients for her to do for our virtual cooking, and we're going to be making some spicy beef tacos. Sponsors like Primera help Friends of the Children impact kids in meaningful ways. The organization commits to each child for 12 years or more, giving them the stability, guidance, and support they need to succeed. And Ajene plans to succeed. I want to help animals, and I also want to bake. 
So for her, having Shay on her side is amazing. And that helps Ajene be her amazing self every day. Well, I look forward to the day I can take my pet to Ajene's veterinary clinic and then go to her bakery afterwards to grab a muffin or something because she wants to be a vet and a baker. She's multi-talented, what can I say? Uh, so Friends of the Children has 22 locations throughout the United States. If you want to learn more about them, you can head to our website, say it with me, king5evening.com. Coming up, a West Seattle nonprofit that came together to feed its community. Plus, music from Washington's own Brandy Carlisle. Welcome back to Evening's Let's Stay Connected special. We're highlighting six different amazing nonprofits in Western Washington. I got the Climate Pledge Arena right behind me. They are working away, getting ready for the Seattle Kraken. Okay, so this next nonprofit takes place in my neighborhood, West Seattle Island. Yes, not only did we have a pandemic this year, but West Seattle lost its bridge. So that's why this nonprofit really stepped up to help the community. The motto of the Fraternal Order of the Eagles is people helping people, and that's no different for the West Seattle Eagles. Most of the time, the Eagles offer meals in-house to raise money for nonprofits. But after seeing so many people struggling, they decided to do something a little different. Um, so we just put it out there and said, you know what, free meals for anybody who wants them. Since mid-March, every single night, the West Seattle Eagles have been handing out free dinners, no questions asked. We've been doing around 100, 150 meals a night. People like John, Gabby, and Debbie sometimes work until 2 or 3 a.m. to prep for the next day. I mean, there's a lot of people out of work and a lot of people struggling to feed themselves. And that's just what we have the resource to do. To maintain social distancing, all meals are to go. People pick up their plates one at a time, however many they want, and take them back home for a hot, pretty much home-cooked meal. It was really good food every day. <laughs> I, it looks like it. I was, I was looking on Facebook and I was like, these look good. <laughs> Some West Seattle restaurants like Ito's Tapas have donated food and time to help the Eagles as well. Uh, West Seattle and, you know, the general area has been uh, very generous. In a time and neighborhood where we all might feel a little isolated, the West Seattle Eagles are making sure we're taking care of each other. You know, growing up here, I absolutely love this community. I mean, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, so to have a resource like the West Seattle Eagles, it feels like a real service to, to the West Seattle community. Working on that story, it just warmed my heart. It felt so incredible that they did that. So their free dine-in service is over and they are closed for dine-in due to the new regulations, but the West Seattle Eagles are still helping people. In fact, they're planning to do a Zoom happy hour every week to make sure everyone can feel a little bit closer with each other. So for more information on the West Seattle Eagles and to find out more about the other nonprofits we've mentioned in this special, you can go to our website, that's king5.com slash connected with a K. Coming up, Brandy Carlisle covers one of Queen's classic songs. Welcome back to Evening, everyone. I am at the lovely, albeit a little bit rainy, Seattle Center tonight, wrapping up our Let's Stay Connected special. I wanted to give a huge thank you to our partner, Primera, for helping me highlight these six amazing nonprofits. I hope you like learning about them as much as I did. So I'm gonna leave you tonight with another concert from the Melodic Caring Project. It stars Washington's own Brandi Carlisle. She does an incredible cover of Queen's classic 39. Let me tell you, when I first listened to this, I haven't stopped listening. I've, I've listened to it 20 times. It's stuck in my head permanently. So hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Have a fantastic night, everyone. It was the sweetest sight I've ever seen Then the night fell gray And the storytellers say There were four gray souls inside Oh, many lonely days Sailed across the milky sea Never back, never feared, never cried Don't you hear my call Though you're many years away Don't you hear 
passion. Love.